Today on Two Crazy Kitas, we have some questions on how you know when you're hungry. And we'll ask Nurse Cindy right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, so we just got back from Keto Summit Omaha. And we have a lot to unpack. Yeah. Both clothes I need to put away and information that we learned at the conference. Yeah, because it was really cool. While we were there, we got to talk to a lot of different people, both people who were attending and some of the speakers. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Ask Nurse Cindy. Yeah, and it was really awesome because we were sitting down and we were just talking to Nurse Cindy, really just in the hallway. And she started telling us about how she's testing her blood sugars to determine whether or not she's actually physically hungry. So we asked her if we can film her giving us this explanation because we thought you guys would be just as interested as we were. So here it is. So we are here with the amazing Ask Nurse Cindy. She was so gracious to have us on her channel on Facebook when we were at KetoCon last year. But she looks like she's gotten a time machine and went back like five years younger. So you, sweet. you are aging backwards, absolutely. So oh my gosh. So Nurse Cindy, what are some things that you are doing different this year mm -hmm. and why? So. I've been ketogenic for a little bit over three and a half years, lost 75 pounds, but then those of you that follow me on Ask Nurse Cindy have noticed that for over a year, every every video I'd say, and I've lost 75 pounds on the ketogenic diet, but I wasn't, I knew I still had plenty of fat left to lose. I had plenty of stored calories, so I went and got what's called a DEXA scan, oh, which is where they look and see where is your fat, where are you storing it, and they can tell you how much of your body is still fat. My visceral fat, which is the scary fat, that's the metabolically unhealthy fat, was gone. It was pretty much fantastic, but I still had a lot of fat on my hips and my thighs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, just ignore that part. But anyway, so so what? Um, so that's going on. And then Dr. Robert Sivis, who's a bariatric surgeon out of Florida, mm -hmm. I started listening to him because he calls himself the carb addiction doctor. Okay. And he himself used to weigh over 300 pounds. And so 25 years ago, he started following a low carb lifestyle. And one of the things he talks about is that those of us that historically, uh, emotionally soothe ourselves with food that would. Versus, me. versus someone that sues themselves with alcohol, nicotine. There's so many different ways that when we have stress in our life that we self-soothe. With my substance of choice was always carboholic. Uh, I'm carboholic was or carbohydrates. So as I'm listening to him and I'm looking at my fasting blood sugars in the morning because I was insulin resistant for like years, pre-diabetic, you know, blood sugar, which is really means I, I was diabetic. But my my A1C was 6.4. So as I've followed this and really I don't cheat but what I was doing is especially with what's going on with my mom you know, losing my mom and my sister's cancer and dad moving in with us is I that increased yeah abrupt change in stress levels I was self-soothing with a duke sausage with pepperoni with a piece of cheese and you say to yourself well this isn't it's like keto. treats no, it's, it's keto. keto it's keto so I was listening to him and he said and I thought this was very very true it resonated with me snacking is never a nutritional event it is always an emotional event no matter what you snack with it's like a cigarette smoker who feels compelled to go out and have a cigarette 15 20 times a day i was wanting to eat again but it wasn't i wasn't out of ketosis you know so i started saying well that's wow that's really valid and he talks about using a bridge when you feel that stress to take a sip of water to get up and just walk around to take some deep yeah. breaths so you can acknowledge what's going on i didn't do too well with that because i still wanted to right i so, just i still need yeah, it now yeah, i took I my walk it. and now i would yeah. like some yeah, cheese, please. I'd like some, please, because I worked. I you know I walked. I spent energy. So what I decided to start doing, um, I keep that glucometer with me now, and I'm constantly, not constantly, but sometimes eight or ten times a day, if it's a really stressful day at work or my flight's delayed or I've got a big talk and I'm, I'm you know, I'm trying to work on it late at night, is I test my glucose, and if my blood sugar is in the high 80s, 90s, or even above, that means that my drive to eat is is emotional. It is not a nutritional driver it is an emotional driver and so I say to myself okay let's identify what's driving that mm -hmm. what is it that's driving that so how can I use that 
bridge? Do I need to get up and walk around? Do I need to pray? Do I need the word? Do read the word? Do I need to just call someone and, and talk to them? Um, and so what it's allowed me to do, so last night I ate um, a very light dinner. And it was just a piece, of, a piece of steak. And then this morning my blood sugar was one, Ken. And that's the dawn effect, so I understand a lot of that. And then there's different foods here. There's all sorts of vendors. Everybody was offering me stuff when I was walking around. Mm -hmm. And I would go over and check my blood sugar because trust me, yeah, I wanted to try it. I wanted it all. I wanted to try it. And my blood sugar was 98, 92. Lunch came. My blood sugar is 87. And I'm like, but you know what? I didn't need to eat. I just wanted to eat. Right. Even though it was all keto, even mm -hmm. though it was all. And so I just tested it and I was 72. So I came over and I got some cheese and I got a little bit of meat. And I, I, it just has helped me be that sort of rails that the railroad needs. You know, I don't yeah. get off track, even with keto stuff. So that's what I've changed. And I've lost um, 8 to 10 pounds in the last two and a half months doing that. So now I can tell people I'm 80 pounds. I'm not saying the 82, 84 yet because, it, you know, woman. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Fluctuate. Yes, yes. So I'll just wait till, it, till I'm definitely down that next and I'll say 85. But right now it's 80 and I'm excited. But I love that, that you're bringing this up because now you see a lot of a push to intuitive eating. Yes. Don't worry so much about, you know, tracking your macros and stuff. Eat when you're hungry. Well, there's two things going on here. My body can tell me I'm hungry and yeah. my mind will tell me my, mm -hmm. they're hungry. Yep. And they want to both eat meals yeah. at very different times. My mind can like intuitively tell me I want to eat over and over again keto foods but over and over yep. again yep. so I love yep. this yep. so you're letting your body talk to you but you are backing it up with some science yeah like, and I don't even let it talk to me sometimes because it's my brain talking to me yeah it's not my body when I feel the actual hunger and I know it's been 12 14 hours since I've eaten or even if it's only eight but I've had a very active day and my steps are up and maybe I've been doing my papa squats yes. and I'm you know working my muscles some then I will let the actual physiologic drive okay, you need something to eat. You don't need a massive amount. But when my blood sugar is just being silly, because it's sort of stressful, there's going things Absolutely. going on, and there's a lot. You get excited. You see Even friends. Even good stress yes, is stress. Yes, you can raise your cortisol, which raises your blood sugar. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm letting my blood glucose meter let me know if my body needs the sustenance or if I'm self-soothing. Wow. So that's worked for us. And what would you have as advice for people who are just starting out? If it's January, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people yes. who are, are just coming into the, to the yes. keto new lifestyle. Year, new year, yeah. And there's a lot of stuff out there yeah. that wasn't yeah. here three no, years ago. No, there wasn't. So there's more to navigate yes. with this and mm -hmm. things to avoid. And what would your um, recommendation be for them? My recommendation to you would be, at first, you eat whatever you want to eat as often as you want to eat it, as long as it's fat or protein. Get the carbs out of your life. Get the carbs and processed carbs. I'm not talking about a piece of broccoli. None of us got to where I was, my heavy set 307, from broccoli. Okay? <laughs> Me it was the carbs. I'm a carb I was eating garbage, these Franken foods. So I would say do what you need to do to get yourself into ketosis, to get fat adapted. At that point, because I've gone through so many levels of yeah. where, to where I am now, and if I had tried to do, because on many days I'm an inadvertent carnivore, mm -hmm. I don't really mean to be. Right. But I, inadvertently at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, do you have any greens or veggies at all? No. No. But in other days I do. I'll have a salad. So do the best you can do. Progress over perfection. Be gracious to yourself. Give yourself of grace. This is a learning process. There's, I fill my time if I'm putting on makeup, even when I'm brushing my teeth, definitely if I'm driving in the car, I'm listening to a podcast. Yeah. And I go with the reputable people that you see at Low Carb Down Under, Low Carb USA, at Keto Summit. I, I typically don't go anywhere and li and spend my time because I can cannot get more than 24 hours of time. Right. Um, with someone that immediately demands that I give them money or they want to sell me the program before they're going to send me the five day. No, I don't do that. I go to someone that's an MD, a physician, a professor, um, Tim Noakes, um, Adam Nally, Ken Berry, of course. I go to people and I fill my mind with more understanding because when we can understand how garbage ruins and inflames us, then we can start to say, okay, I, I ate half a chicken last night, but that's okay because I'm two weeks into this. Yes. But I didn't go for the donut. I didn't go and make some toast with that bread that's still there for the kids. Be gracious to yourself. Be kind to yourself. And as you evolve and as you get used to it, you're able to then make other tweaks, other tweaks. I tell people, I, I, you have four hamburgers. Yeah. Don't, and don't worry about that whole gluconeogenesis right now. Right. Tweak it as you go. And you'll turn around and you'll look and you'll be down 80 pounds or whatever you have to lose. And it'll be two years and you're like... 
This has been amazing. That's been awesome. Amazing. Yeah. I like the thought of working on your relationship with yourself mm -hmm. as you are losing the weight because you're with you forever. If you don't like you, it's going to be a tough rest of your life, <laughs> you're right? Stuck. And something that happens with part of this like food addiction, carb addict like I am too, is we're really hard on ourselves. We need to be our biggest advocate, because right? we don't feel worthy. We no, don't feel worthy. But you are. You're yes, you absolutely are. worthy. Yes, and there's are. lots of people like Ask Nurse Cindy. If you haven't subscribed to Nurse Cindy, if you haven't seen her in Facebook, go do that now. Because not only does she have good information, and there are others like Dr. Barry and like all of these podcasts that she's talking about, they have good information, but they care about you yes. as a person. And they are celebrating the good success that you have coming in your yes. life. Yes, you do. Yay! Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I found that to be so fascinating. It was really fascinating. Nurse Cindy is super knowledgeable, but she's also really approachable. Uh -huh. Like she's the person that you want to see in the room and you're like, should I go near her? Like, would she mind if I talked to her about something? She would absolutely not mind at all. And the funny part is, is you feel that way. And then after you talk to her, you're like, what was I so worried about talking to her for? She is just an awesome person. She's just one of the nicest people I've ever met. So I was super fascinated by the whole idea of, yeah, why Why didn't I think about this? Like test your blood sugar to determine if you're hungry because when your blood sugar is low, that's when you actually need some nourishment. And there's so many times where I know I'm just popping something in my mouth because like I just want to eat. So I'm actually gonna start doing the same thing, especially with lacrosse season coming. And, you know, I go to these games and I always feel like, oh, I need to get a little bit of fuel in my body, which is why I'm eating bars or something. But do I really need some fuel? Are my blood sugars really low enough where I'm not going to be able to get through a two hour game? So I want to start doing it. And it's another reason that I actually want to get a continuous glucose monitor so that I don't even need to stick myself. I can just look right on my phone and be like, yo, nope. Blood sugars are perfectly high. You definitely don't need any food. Yeah, I enjoy thinking about in more intuitive eating, listening to your body, but I like the science behind checking your blood and making sure that your body isn't giving you any mixed signals. Yeah, so that is our video for today. Let us know down in the comments section what you think about this whole idea of you know, checking your glucose before you eat or every time you go in a snack to see really where are you on that meter. So please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. That way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.